Kurma means a turtle or a tortoise, an amphibious creature. It's in the water but it can also venture out. So, you are a… you can become an amphibious creature if you master this Kurma Nadi. That means you're in the body but you can be little outside the physical nature because this is your desire. Your desire is not to leave the physical for good. You want to be rooted in the physical, but you want to have a taste of what is beyond. This is human desire always. It's amazing how so many people can live without being conscious of it. But once awareness begins to gain a certain sharpness or keenness, this is the first thing that becomes an amazing process and no wonder breath watching as it's known today is probably the most practiced form of meditation. If you take your forefinger, place it beneath your nostrils and gently exhale, find out in which nostril the breath is dominant right now. In the yogic way of looking at things, there is no such thing as body and mind. There is physical body, there is mental body, there's energy body. The energy body comprises of seventy to thousand nadis. When we say a nadi, it means a channel or a pathway. Nadi does not mean a nerve. If you cut open this body, you will not see the nadis, there is no such thing physically. But uh, experientially if you observe the nature of the movement of energy in the system, you will see that it always moves along established pathways, never randomly. So there are seventy-two thousand ways in which it moves. Thirty-six on the right, thirty-six on the left, thirty-six thousand on either side. The right is called as Pingala, the left is referred to as Ida. These are also referred to as sun and moon. So, these two, Ida and Pingala or the sun and the moon, the right and the left, on the level of your mind signify the logical and the intuitive. When I say intuitive, intuition is not another dimension of perception, but just another dimension of computing. If you have the same amount of information within you, if you go logically, there may be ten steps to get to a place. Intuition means you don't take the ten steps, you just jump to the tenth step. But today modern education systems, one hundred percent stomping on the intuition, intuitive dimension, only the logical is developed. Anything intuitive is dismissed off as mumbo-jumbo. For everything you have to think through. What your grandmothers just knew, Today you have to do a billion dollar research to find the same thing. When you have to think through everything and everything seems to have multiple steps, now life becomes stressful. If one wants to be successful beyond a certain point, there are some things where you should be able to jump the steps and arrive at it. Still the same information, still the same stuff, it is just that you don't have to walk through that many steps every time. This makes life very stressful because it is like you are driving your car on two wheels, the other two, two wheels unused and safe, I don't know for when to be used, but the two wheels that you are using, will feel enormous amount of stress. So, in the yogic system, the significance of the intuition 
is as important as the logical. So bringing a balance between Ida and Pingala is a very important part of living a balanced life. Being able to conduct yourself through complex situations with ease comes only when the intuitive dimension of your mind is sufficiently evolved and developed. Otherwise, small things will freak you because for everything there are multiple steps. Here we'll be doing a few things to bring a balance between Ida and Pingala, to give you an experiential understanding of this. If you take your forefinger, place it beneath your nostrils and gently exhale, find out in which nostril the breath is dominant right now. Hmm? How many of you right? Left? Okay, it's either right or left. Only two barrels, you know. If there were twenty-five, how complex it would have been <laughs> If you observe yourself through the day, you would have noticed that approximately between forty to forty-eight minutes, the dominance of the breath will shift from right to left and left to right. Have you ever noticed this? Have you? Why this is happening is, within the system, the dominance of energy, a prana, which is the vital force in the system, is shifting from pingala to ida and ping ida to pingala, every forty minutes. Once the energy shifts, within the next eight minutes, the breath will shift. If you're in a perfect state of health and well-being, it will shift within a few minutes, few moments or we can say instantaneously. This shifting is happening every forty minutes, but during certain times of the day, which are referred to as the Sandhya Kalas, which means the twilight zones. Twenty minutes before sunrise, twenty minutes after sunrise. Oh, that's okay, Sadhguru, tell me if there are other times <laughs> Twenty minutes before noon, twenty minutes after noon, twenty minutes before sunset, twenty minutes after sunset, twenty minutes before midnight and twenty minutes after midnight, forty minutes at a time, four times during the day. There is a certain transition happening. These are called twilight zones or sandhyas, because at this time, the balance between Ida and Pingala shifts very rapidly. Because it's shifting rapidly within yourself, it's very easy to bring it to a balance at these times. To an extent, almost everywhere in the world, anything, any spiritual process or practice means morning, evening. Sandhya has become synonymous with spiritual practice. The time has become synonymous with many practices. So, uh, bringing a balance between Ida and Pingala is important for a balanced development of a human being. You feel truly comfortable only when you're in balance, in some way. When there's any kind of imbalance, there's a discomfort, isn't it? Yes? When you're experiencing any kind of imbalance, there is discomfort. Only when you attain to a certain balance, you feel really comfortable. So comfort is never really determined by what you're sitting on or where you are. Comfort is determined by how balanced you are within yourself. This basic comfort that every human being must have, unfortunately, has been denied to too many people. Just to sit with total ease in one place is not there in most people right now, isn't it? Simply sitting in ease, complete ease. It is not there. So, when there is no ease, it's a disease. Whether you're medically diagnosed or not, it is a disease. 
If the disease continues over a period of time, it will manifest itself in the body as a malfunction which gets labeled as some kind of… this is like incredible names they're coming out with for every kind of problem. The fundamental reason why the system doesn't last its span, it's designed to last its span, but it is not lasting its span because we're keeping it in various levels of imbalance. You drive your car on just two wheels all the time, you know, something will break down. <laughs> so, similarly the whole system is not being properly kept, there is not enough balance in the system. Only when you're in balance there is comfort, otherwise there's no comfort. One will not know comfort unless he knows some sense of balance within himself. Only when you're in balance, you can be still and man is ill. Human beings are ill only because they do not know how to be still. Stillness will not come unless there is proper balance. Only when you're totally balanced, you can be still within yourself, otherwise that will not happen. So, this breath or what conducts the breath in yoga, we call this the kurma nadi. You know what's a kurma? Not kurma. Kur. <laughs> no, I saw some tongues. <laughs> Kurma means a turtle or a tortoise, an amphibious creature. It's in the water but it can also venture out. So, you are a… you can become an amphibious creature if you master this Kurma Nadi. That means you're in the body but you can be little outside the physical nature because this is your desire. Your desire is not to leave the physical for good. You want to be rooted in the physical, but you want to have a taste of what is beyond. This is human desire always. In trying to see everything that you're doing, please look at this. Whether you are going out to conquer the world, you get married, you bear children, you do this, you drink, you go to temple, you drug, you do whatever the hell you want. Essentially, all that you're looking for is, you want a bigger experience of life, isn't it? Yes or no? The only way your life's ex experience can be enhanced is by expanding your perception. If your eyes can see something that it cannot see right now, your experience is enhanced. If your ears can hear something that you cannot hear something right now, your experience is enhanced. In like this, if your perception is enhanced, only then your experience is enhanced. Otherwise, you're only going on imagining things within the limited data that you have already gathered. Yes? The only way to enhance is to expand or to come out. So kurmanadi, this is… this breath is referred to as kurmanadi because if you use it properly, you can become like an amphi amphibious creature that you can be in the body but you can venture outside. This is like a rope. Let's say we pull out your breath right now. If I take away your breath, what will happen? You and your body will fall apart. Right now in your experience, you are the body sitting here, but this rise and chintataku and gomakura, everything is gathered up here and sitting here. Yes or no? Yes. It's food that you've eaten. Is this an accumulation? Do you understand this is an accumulation? What you accumulate can be yours, can never ever be you, isn't it? Yes? I can say, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, but if I say, this is me, this is me, this is me, lost it, isn't it? Whatever you accumulate can be yours, can never ever be you. So the moment if I pull the breath away, then you and what is… what you have gathered will fall apart. You and your body will fall apart or in other words, it's the breath or the kurmanadi which ties you and your body together. When we say kurmanadi, we are not just talking about the passage of air. Right now you are incapable of experiencing the breath in the sense… See right now if you watch, you think you are watching the breath, no you're only noticing the sensations caused by the passage of breath. You're not capable of knowing the breath itself. 
So the breath or what sets up this pattern, what directs this pattern, that we are calling as Kurmanadi. If you have some mastery over that, you become an amphibious creature. That is, you are rooted in the physical, but you can venture out. If this much freedom arises in human life, suddenly you know there is another possibility that there is something beyond physical nature. Whatever you are going through this… within this physical cocoon is not everything, you know a completely different dimension of life. If this one thing you know, if you have a moment of experience beyond your physicality, death is not an issue, isn't it? Hmm? If you know life beyond your physical body right now, death is not an issue. Death is a big issue because you know nothing beyond the body, when they threaten to take it away, there is terror in people simply because everything that you know is going away. If you knew something beyond the body, suddenly this would not be such a big problem. And it… it is not a problem. It is a solution for all our problems that we are mortal. If you are here, let's say next million years you are not going to go. That is a problem, isn't it? We must live our span and we must go. That's a good thing. As once awareness gains the needed sharpness or keenness, when this begins to happen, one of the first things that naturally comes into play is the breath. It's amazing how most human beings live without being aware of the breath, which is… Uh, which is a certain level of mechanical action in the body, which is constant and continuous. It's truly amazing how so many people can live without being conscious of it. But once awareness begins to gain a certain sharpness or keenness, this is the first thing that becomes an amazing process and no wonder breath watching as it's known today is probably the most practiced form of meditation. It is so basic and simple, but uh, it comes so easy and naturally to people that it does not need any preparation. If one becomes a little conscious, naturally breath will be in the awareness. Probably this happened to me when I was six, seven years of age, when I started just enjoying the breath, the moment of my little chest and belly in those days, <laughs> how the stomach and the chest moved in rhythm constantly. I must have spent hours and hours just noticing that. It kept me interested and engaged. It's much later that I even… even the idea of meditation entered my life, but just the simple rhythm that's going on endlessly and you cannot ignore if you are a bit conscious. So he is a poem for the breath, the beauty of the breath and the possibility of the breath. This is titled as Divine Hand. As I see the seemingly perpetual play of breath, as I see the seemingly perpetual play of breath, the breath, the maker of my body and the taker of my being, when the timely moment comes, the breath, the maker of my body and the taker of my being when the timely moment comes. This ceaseless play of the unseen hand of the divine, this ceaseless play of the unseen hand of the divine, me firmly held the hand and the maker could not escape me firmly held the hand and the maker could not escape.